Quantum Mechanics Lecture 3 In the last videos, we have learned about how the quantum mechanics evolved, what were the inconsistencies in the classical mechanics which led to the evolution of quantum mechanics. We have also learned about black body radiation, the classical attempts made to describe black body radiation and also how quantum mechanics successfully explained the phenomenon of black body radiation spectrum. In this video, we will be learning about wave functions. We will learn about the physical significance of wave function, the charge density or particle density which are the functions of wave function, we will also know about the probability which is a measure of wave function and also look into some of the properties of wave functions. We are familiar with the concept of dual nature of light. That is, light can behave as both particle and as a wave. This nature is not just restricted to light but every universe every body in the universe can behave as both particle as well as light every body which moves with a certain velocity can have both the particle nature and the wave nature that is you and me and everything you see around you is not just particles but it has a wave nature and this wave nature is called the particle wave or the matter wave. The wave behavior deeply depends on the mass of the body. As the mass of the body decreases significantly, such as an electron or any subatomic particle such as proton, the, uh, the wave functions become significant, the wave nature becomes significant and the particle nature becomes insignificant. While the mass is very high, such as the classical bodies you see around, the wave nature becomes highly insignificant and the particle nature predominates. A wave function in quantum physics is a mathematical description of a quantum state of an isolated quantum system. A wave function contains all the data about the about the system, all the data of, of their physical qualities, of their physical properties, such as what is the energy that system contains or where the system is in space or what is the momentum of the system, etc. Every detail about that system is contained, is stored in this wave and this wave describes the system and its state completely. A wave function is represented by the Greek letter psi. A wave function contains all the details about a system such as its position, energy, momentum, etc. When we measure a wave with a good tool, it will give you the answer for that particular tool. For example, if you measure a wave, with a tool that measures the position of that wave, then the wave function will give you the position of that system. Again, if you measure uh, the wave with a tool that measures the momentum of that system, then the wave function will give you the momentum of that system. Similarly, if you measure the wave function with a tool that measures the energy, then the wave function will give you the energy of that system. These tools which are operated on the wave function to get the physical value of the physical properties are known as operators. Operators when operated on a wave function will give the real values of the physical properties. Wave function is a measure of particle density. We 
all know that the amplitude square is proportional to the energy of a wave. That is, the amplitude of a wave is uh, proportional, it's uh, related to the energy. As the amplitude increases, the energy of the wave also increases. We have seen this several times in electromagnetic wave and we are uh, familiar with this concept. In photons, the energy density can be calculated as number of photons into energy of one photon. Therefore, the amplitude can also be proportional to the number of photons or the particle density. Therefore, the amplitude square is proportional to the particle density. If we multiply the particle with its charge, say if the particles are electrons, then it will have every particle will have a charge E. Therefore, we will see that the amplitude square is again proportional to the charge density. Amplitude square in the matter wave is, can be found as a modulus of the matter wave square or modulus psi square. Therefore, modulus psi square, we can see that it will give us the charge density or the particle density. Therefore, wave function is a measure of particle density. The wave function will give how dense the particle is packed in a particular space. Wave function is also a function, a measure of position probability. Consider a body which is standing still. Then if we put that particular body inside a box, then that box completely contains every information about that body. That is, when we measure or integrate the wave function of that body inside that box, then the wave function will be completely contained in that box. That is, wave function is 100% contained in that box. Position probability, we take probability is equal to 1, then the wave function is completely contained inside the box and it's 0 when the wave function is completely outside the box. Consider another scenario when the system is moving and we consider a box. In this case, the wave function is not completely contained inside the box. The wave function is there both outside and inside the box. Therefore, the wave which is inside the box we are considering can be maybe 30% or 50%. Therefore, the probability of finding that particle inside the box will be 0.3 or 0.5. In the first case, probability of finding that particle inside the box was 100%. Therefore, it has a probability 1. In the second case, the probability of finding that particle inside the box is reduced to 30% or 50%. Therefore, its probability is 0.3 or 0.5. Therefore, the wave function gives us an idea where the the particle is or where the system is. It tells us the probability of finding a particle inside the area we are assigning or inside the box we are constructing. The uh, contained, if the wave function is contained inside the area or the volume which we are considering, then there is a higher possibility or a hundred percent possibility that the particle is inside the box and if the wave function is not contained completely then it tells us that the particle is not completely inside the box it moves in and out 
Therefore, the wave function is also a measure of position probability. The position probability can be measured as mod psi square is proportional to the probability where mod psi square is psi star psi, where psi star is the conjugate of the uh, function psi. That is, the function psi may contain a real part and an imaginary part. When we measure probability, we doesn't need any imaginary part to be there because probability is a real quantity and imaginary part doesn't serve any purpose. So to get rid of the imaginary part, we will multiply the wave function with its conjugate so that the, the imaginary part will vanish. Therefore, we will take psi square is proportional to the probability. Mod psi square is a measurable quantity where psi is not. Therefore, the prob uh, in matter wave, what we measure is just a mod psi square and the psi itself is not measurable. According to the definition of the probability, we can say that the mod psi square is the probability of finding a particle inside a particular volume V. Therefore, in this case, if we consider that the particle is uh, being found inside a volume V, then psi star psi tells us the probability of finding that particle inside this particular volume V. If psi star psi or this function equal to 1, then it tells that the particle is completely inside the volume V. In this case, if we measure integral over V psi star psi of this particular matter wave, then it will give us 1 because the matter wave is completely confined inside the box and the volume has the uh, material or has the property completely restricted inside and there is no probability of finding this particle outside the box. Therefore, since the box contains the system entirely, this function will be equal to 1, that is probability equal to 1, which means the system is 100% inside the volume V. In this case, mod psi square will be equal to 1. In the second case, we know that the matter is somewhat inside and somewhat outside the box. Therefore, the matter wave is displaced. It doesn't contain, it's not contained inside the box. Therefore, its probability, that is, size, uh, mod psi square is equal to integral over V psi star psi will not give us 1. It will be some number between 0 and 1. Whereas, if we consider a larger box which contains that matter wave completely, then in this volume, psi star psi of the system will be equal to 1. In this particular system, that is, when the system is completely enclosed inside the volume, then mod psi square is equal to 1. That means the uh, probability of finding the system inside the box is 100%. Therefore, using the formula, mod psi square is equal to integral over V psi star psi dV. We can integrate, we can equate this to 1 because the probability of finding this system inside the box is 100%. In this case, the box is in the Cartesian coordinate. That is, we can measure the volume of the box in x, 
y and z directions. Therefore, psi, this matter wave psi, which is a function of x, y and z, can be multiplied by its conjugate, uh, which is also a function of x, y, z. We multiply this because we need only real values because position or probability can never be imaginary. And the volume of this box can be dx square plus dy square plus dz square. Therefore, inside this volume, this function will be equal to 1. If we generalize this idea, then we can say that finding this system in a uh, box of infinite volume, that is, when the length is from minus infinity to plus infinity, when the breadth is from minus infinity to plus infinity, and so does the thickness, then the system will be equal to 1. The probability of finding the system will be equal to 1. And this is a very generalized idea. This idea tells us that every matter wave can be uh, contained into this equation that is psi is equal to, uh, psi star psi is equal to 1 for the entire universe or from a space which is minus infinity to plus infinity. Now we will look into some of the properties of the wave function which we have learned from these uh, times since we have analyzing the wave function. We have learned some of the properties so let us write it down. The first property is the wave function must be single valued at each point. We know that wave function is a mathematical function. So, the wave function cannot have two values for one particular point. This will rule out, the, uh, rule out uh, what is meant to be a mathematical function. A mathematical function is a, a, a plot, is a function which has only one y value for one particular x value. Therefore, same in the case of matter wave, you cannot have two values for one single point. Each point should have its own value and the value must be single valued every point. And the second property is it should have definite values. That is the wave function cannot be infinite at any point. Wave function being infinite at a point doesn't make any sense. Because wave function is a mathematical function and it describes a system. Therefore, the system will be in a definite state. A system may be have a definite position, a definite energy. It cannot have uh, indefinite or uh, infinite uh, physical properties. Therefore, the values of a, a wave function should be definite at each point and it have to be single valued the third function is uh, the third property is that the wave function have to be confined in the last we have seen that the wave function from this equation we can see that the wave function or mod psi squared should be contained inside the entire universe that is this function should give us one for every system and this is also a property of the wave function. So dear student, in this video we have learned about wave function. We have learned about the physical properties and the physical significance of the wave function and also some of the properties of the wave function. See you in the next video with some of the applications of wave functions such as Rodinger equations. We will see you in the next video. Thank you.